Hello Booktube and welcome to my bookshelves. So I hope everyone is safe and well. Um, we've had heavy snow overnight in the south of England and it's currently completely white outside. Um, I've got day off work anyway, I'll tell you why in a moment, um, but I thought I'd do my, my January reading wrap up for you. Um, so. Why have I got the day off? Well, tonight is we are back on stage with Treasure Island. So if you saw my last video, you'll know that I was preparing for the first night of Treasure Island. So last weekend we did we did four shows. We did Friday night, we did two on Saturday, and then we did a relaxed charity show on the Sunday. And they went Okay, the first night was a little bit shaky, um, but I mean, only we knew where we went wrong. But audiences still loved it. The two Saturday shows were were really really good, and the Sunday show is always really enjoyable. So we do a charity show for disabled and people with learning disabilities um, on the Sunday, and they absolutely thoroughly thoroughly enjoy our. Our, our pantomimes, our shows. Um, so yes, yeah, so that was last weekend. Um, I've then been back to work, um, and then tonight we have another show, and then we have two more on the Saturday, and then we have a big party on Saturday night, and then on the Sunday we clear it all away, put everything away under the stage, behind the stage, and then it's all over. And then we start again on the next show um, in the middle of February. So we have a couple of weeks off before we start the next one, and I'll tell you more about that nearer the time. So, I haven't really had much time for reading, but I have read, I haven't read many books, but what I have read have been quite big, chunky books. So, so I've read a lot of pages, I just haven't finished many books. I also did a Sherlock Holmes um, read-along week in the middle of January as well, but let me get to what I've read. So, first book I read in January, continuing my Agatha Christie A to Z, was At Bertram's Hotel. This is a Miss Marple book, one of her later books. This is sort of mid-60s, late 60s. Um, this is set in a hotel in London, um, Bertram's Hotel, which is um, an old style hotel which tries to preserve sort of the the classic sort of 1940 style hotel and so you get a lot of elderly people want to go to stay there because it reminds them of their youth um, and a lot of nobility and sort of higher the higher end of the spectrum um uh, miss marple goes along she's spending a few days there and she overhears some sort of conversations which sort of Pique her interest. Um, we then get a a vicar who disappears, and everyone's worried about him. And there's also other dubious characters around as well. Um, and then there's a murder, and Miss Marple sort of helps to solve it. Now, this I didn't really like this. Um, this was. A lot of nostalgia on Agatha Christie's part, telling the reader everything was better in the old days. You could get proper proper lunches and proper dinners and proper service, not like nowadays. Um, and Miss Marple is not really in this book. She sort of appears at the start and in the middle and at the end, but she doesn't really do anything. She's just there to overhear conversations um, and yeah and not really much happens this book is two hundred just over 300 pages and the murder happens on about page 240 or something and then you get like 50 pages and it's solved so yeah it's a very slow yeah, it's a very slow book, so I didn't really, I didn't really rate this. Again, this is one of her late books. 
and yeah, she was sort of wallowing in nostalgia by that point. But yeah, at Bertram's Hotel. Next book I picked up is one of the big chunky books that I mentioned, and it is I Am Pilgrim by Terry Hayes, and it is a yeah, it's a 900 page, it's over 900 pages. This is a thriller, um, and yeah, it it was okay. It was 900 pages of okay. There were bits in it which were quite exciting, and I thought, okay, this is getting good now. I mean, then there were bits that were, okay, what's this got to do with the plot? Not much. Yeah, it's well written. It's for, for a nine hundred page book. It's fast paced. There's lots of chapters and there's lots of lots of short chapters and lots of cliffhangers, which is designed to keep you reading. And it worked because I did finish it. Um, but yeah, it's okay. So this follows um, a secret agent, FBI special person. Um, who has the code name of Pilgrim? He's retired, but is called back into service. Um, and there is a deadly threat from the Middle East. Somebody has developed a weapon that they're going to use on the United States. So he has to travel to the Middle East to try and find him and stop him. And yeah, and that's the central plot. But you get a lot, a lot of backstory. So it's almost a hundred pages in before you actually get to the main story. You have a lot of background for for Pilgrim, and yeah, and then there's a lot of background for the bad guy as well. So yeah, it's it's, um, it's well written, but it was definitely about three hundred pages too long. Yeah, if this had been cut down by a third. I would have probably enjoyed it more. But yeah, I read it, it's off my shelf. This was taking up a lot of room on my shelf, so I'm glad I've read it, I can get rid of it now. And it is I Am a Pilgrim by Terry Hayes. Um, I then did mid-January, I did a Sherlock Holmes read-along. I've done a whole video on that, so go and check that one out. We read six short stories in six days, and then I was on Twitter and Instagram sort of talking about it. Lots of good fun. I may do another one later in the year, but yeah, really enjoyed those. I then did a buddy read with the people over at Book X. So Lucy over at Book X announced that she wanted to read The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, and they were going to host a buddy read on their on their website or uh, Book X. Um, and I was going to read it anyway, so I've joined in and. I was really, really looking forward to this. So this is a murder mystery set in the style of Agatha Christie, so set in a big country house, um, but with a twist. And the twist is that the detective, the hero of the book, um, every time he... so when he wakes up, he wakes up in the body of a different guest at this big country house. And he has so many bodies, so many days, to solve the murder so he can be released from whatever is happening. The concept is is amazing. Um, I enjoyed the writing of it. I thought the writing was really top notch, um, and yeah, I enjoyed the characters. And I was it over complicated. So there was a big discussion over on Book X, um, and although people enjoyed. The writing and the story of it, I think it was over complicated. There were lots of characters. In fact, you get a cast list at the start, uh, at the start of the book, and you have to keep. I had to keep flicking back to to that to work out who people were. Um, so yes, it is over complicated. So you get the viewpoint from one character, and then. He then repeats the day, so so when that character ends, he then goes back to the beginning of that day, wakes up in a new body, and then repeats that day. So you get the same event, but you'll get it from five or six different viewpoints. And you'll see stuff that 
was not revealed in the first bodies. And it was absolutely fascinating. Really, uh, I really enjoyed it. I love these these complicated murder mysteries. I think it was an enjoyable read. You really, really have to concentrate on it because there is a lot going on. There's a lot of detail in the first 100 pages that doesn't make any sense until you get to page 400 where you see it from another point of view and you think, oh, that's why that happened. So, yeah, thoroughly recommend it, but yeah, like I say, you do have to concentrate. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was mixed on the book read, on the book X buddy read. It was mixed reviews. And that is Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. And now two books that I am currently reading. I'm in the middle of two at the moment. One is a collection of short stories um, by Stephen King. And that is Nightmares and Dreamscapes. And I am about two thirds, three quarters way through. Um, Mixed. Some stories are absolutely fantastic. Other stories I found a little bit boring. So yeah, I will do a proper wrap up when I've finished it. Um, highlights so far for me is the story called Chattery Teeth, which is a pair of novelty teeth that come to life and start eating people. Um, um, there's a story called Sneakers, which is sort of a ghost story. Um, the Ten O'Clock People um, I enjoyed it as well. There's a few that I really enjoyed and a few that were quite forgettable. Yeah, but that is, I'll do a proper wrap up of that probably next month. And I am also about a third of the way through um, Agatha Christie's autobiography. So this is the last one um, in my A of A to Z of Agatha Christie. Um, this was her autobiography that she wrote in the 1970s. And the first, I'm finding this a bit slow, to be honest. I'm about 200 pages in, and she hasn't mentioned writing once. I mean, she's mentioned a few poems that she wrote, um, but it's all been about um, her growing up and childhood. And, and although it's interesting, I'm just finding it a little bit slow. Hopefully the, the second half, when she actually talks about her books, will be a little bit more interesting. So that is the autobiography. So that is everything I read in January. Obviously I'm busy all weekend, so I probably won't get too much chance to get any reading done this weekend. So let me know what you read in January. Um, talk to me in the comments and I will see you all again in my next video. Thank you for watching.